Hello everyone and welcome back to another video and um, welcome back to a another review sort of series that we're doing for um, Superman and Lois. Yeah, um, I feel like this one came be, out today. Yeah, I feel like this oh, one no, would be a, this one would be more like if the episodes are interesting than like a weekly. It depends, I guess, what happens. Yeah, in the if anything yeah. big happens, we'll we'll cover it. And uh, if it's sort of just like your I don't know, throwaway sort of episode. We probably won't be covering it. But yeah, this is the first episode we got, um, came out yesterday. Yeah. Um, uh, and we'll cover non spoiler thoughts first and then get into the yeah, episode. Yeah. And also with us today is Resident Flash himself, Jay. So say hello, Jay. Hello there. Yeah. So, uh, because you love the CW universe and you know this universe better than both of us. Uh, yeah. Because I. Well, what's left of it? Yeah. What's left of it? There's not a whole lot, but, uh, I mean, I I watched The Flash and enjoyed that, but I didn't really watch any of the other shows. And I watched the crossovers and stuff. But uh, this I was definitely going to watch because Superman's like my second favorite DC hero besides Batman. So um, I was really excited for this. Well, mostly excited because, I mean, it could take the route of like the newest seasons of The Flash where it's like really cheesy and goofy. But um, yeah, uh, I guess let's get into our thoughts. So uh, let's start with you, Jay, because you love this universe more than both of us. What did you think about this? I thought it was quite good in the sense that it's a different kind of uh, Superman that we see because in past films and TV series, uh, we kind of see him just like crash land on Earth, him like grow up, feel like Smallville really, mm. and uh, all the uh, other Superman films. But with this, I kind of like how it's like Clark Kent trying to explore fatherhood more than anything. It's like something we haven't seen from Superman before. Yeah, yeah, I kind of agree with that. I thought it was like... Uh, we see obviously see that stuff in comics and stuff, but not in like any sort of live action or ad like any sort of adaptation. We haven't seen Superman trying to deal with uh, having kids and that sort of thing. Um, so I yeah. thought that was interesting, yeah. and uh, I think that the whole like show that a lot of it was like a lot better than I thought it would be because it doesn't feel like it's in the same universe uh, as the Flash or you know like even though it technically is obviously it's still in the Arrowverse. It doesn't Wait. feel like it's in that oh, universe oh, to me. Not that. What, what's I've got a question about that now because in terms of it, it's obviously it's made by the people who uh, made Flash, so it is technically part of the Arrowverse, mm -hmm. and plus it's Superman was in Crisis and all that, mm -hmm. and Supergirl. But right, if you've I message you this, Saban, um, if you look at the um, what's it called, Kent Farm from Elseworlds, it looks way right, different. Yeah, it, it's the Smallville farm, but then all yeah. of a sudden this this farm, um, it looks like. I think it's the one from Justice League. It looked very it similar to the one from Justice League. Yeah, it looked like the one from the movies. But um, yeah, I thought that was. I thought the whole show, to be honest, was like uh, the whole thing felt like it was separated from the Flash in some way, like or the whole Arrowverse. Because I thought that uh, this had a more serious tone than most of those shows. It felt like it was more cinematic. Like the way it was shot was a lot better. The way it was written was slightly better for the most part. I mean, there, obviously there were like a few things that were a bit wonky here and there, but it was still great for the most part, in my opinion. And um, I felt like the way they handled a lot of things in it were a lot better than how a lot of the other Arrowverse shows handled it. Uh, Ismail, I guess let's hear, what, what did you think about it? Um, I, When I saw the trailer, I was saying to you, this this looks like it's going to be good. Mm -hmm. And um, I think a lot of people weren't expecting much out of it, but from the first episode, I actually liked like a lot of the stuff that happened in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. And it went... It, it, like felt like it had quite a lot of depth, depth as well. Mm. So um, that's that's a good thing, I guess. And it felt like it was crammed, but like for the first episode, mm. but it all linked together and tied together really nicely. So yeah, yeah, it was over an hour long, so it was quite a lengthy like premiere episode. But um, I thought that again the way it was handled was really good, and uh, I'm as I said surprised that uh, which is another, one thing that's kind of scaring me about this is that. I'm kind of scared that other people would have the mentality mentality that I did, which was that it's a CW show, this could go horribly wrong, uh, and then they just won't bother watching it and giving it a chance, and then it will kind of fizzle out, which I'm a bit scared about. But it is Superman, so maybe people will be willing to give it a chance or something like that. Um, but uh, yeah, I guess that's really it for non-spoiler thoughts, isn't it? There wasn't a whole lot to say. Like Without spoiling it, it's a lot of spoilery, uh, even though it was an hour. There were like quite a few spoilery things in it, but for the most part, it was like pretty non-spoilery i'd say but yeah do you guys want to get to spoilers yeah let's just get straight into it all right so um, um, i just want to say like the like, yeah, biggest easter egg for me 
like um, I think the first minute or so, mm. uh, what happened? You know where it has like nineteen forty one suit with like the black S, not but like a bit of a shield action, present action more than anything. Comics any. number one, the whole cover was there because he was holding the green car and everything. It, I was done. Yeah, yeah, that's what I noticed. That made, thought, that made hell, me this so is... happy. Yeah, that was just great. I was like, D- D- yes, this is Superman. This is what I wanted from Superman for so long because I wanted um, the like classic Superman where he's... I mean, I, as, I, like, as I've usually said, I don't mind the alternate interpretations, but I don't feel like Zack Snyder really understood the point of Superman's character, especially with certain things he did with like how his dad died and other weird crap in Man of Steel that I didn't really like, but I thought that this was a lot better than most of that stuff. I thought that it was a, a like much better version of Superman's origin, even though they sort of showed it in uh, the first five minutes. But then also the way he was acting and stuff throughout the episode, I thought it was a lot more interesting and a lot better, especially with stuff like um, when he had that classic suit, and then uh, he says, like the guy says to him, or the kid says to him. Um, uh, nice suit that he's like thanks my mum made it that was a nice reference I thought that was good but um, yeah that's like a line from the comics yeah yeah so um, I thought that was great um, also uh, one thing I was shocked about was um, that Martha dies I wasn't expecting that to happen like in the first episode of the show that Superman's mum dies um, I, See, I was expecting it right because if you watch Arrow season 1 Someone dies. Mm. If you watch Flash season one, someone dies. But they, they both, both of those characters in both of the TV series, mm. they both die in like the second to, or second to last or last episode of the first season. Yep. So I thought someone's going to die if it's Superman and Lois, if it's the same mm. writers essentially. Yeah. But then the first episode, I thought, okay, okay, a bit of a curveball. Yeah, I, was, I wasn't expecting it in the first episode. And obviously, we, uh, another thing we see in this episode is um, with Superman's kids. Uh, that one of them um, was it Jordan who had the powers? I can't remember. Jordan, yeah, Jordan has the powers. Jordan, yeah, yeah. Uh, he has the powers. He has Superman's powers, which I wasn't expecting uh, because I thought they would do the stupid, typical thing where it's like, oh, the kid who has everything also gets the powers, and the other one gets jealous, and they just have the stupid, like, arguing crap. But thankfully, it looks like they're not going to do that. And I liked how the kid, like, the kids weren't cringy or annoying. I mean, they had like some weird scenes, like where the um, Jordan kisses that girl and then his her boyfriend comes and says like oh like I'm gonna he basically comes and says I'm the big bad bully he's gonna totally overreact about this and stop beating the crap out of you and then obviously that caused him to use his powers and all that but uh, aside from stuff like that I thought that the um, writing for the most part was really good I think that was another another good see, strong point about it. see what you said that's the one what that kind of reminds me of it reminds me of Smallville like yeah. the early days yeah. of Superman like season one mm. like yeah. how Clark was trying to learn his powers mm. That's what that's going to like remind me of a lot. Yeah, if it heads that direction anyway. Mm. There were also uh, a few other interesting Easter eggs as well. Like uh, speaking of Easter eggs, since I guess we're going through those. Uh, there was the thing with um, you know, on the uh, like in Superman's house, there was a notice board there, and it said called uh, Doctor Donna, which is obviously a uh, reference to Richard Donner, who directed the first Superman movie, and uh, also it said um. Actually, no, I think it's, it's. I don't remember what it said. I think it said write a letter to Doctor Don, and then said um, called uh, Siegel and Shuster, which obviously um, Superman's creators. So I thought that was an interesting Easter egg that we like saw that on a wall in the episode. And then also one thing that I was like, this is kind of confusing, but it's cool that it's there. Uh, it's like you messaged me about that was when um, Jordan was playing Injustice. And, and he was like, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I was gonna message you, and I thought, no, he hasn't seen it yet. Wait. Yeah, and then he was like playing Injustice, and uh, he was like, uh, Superman's like, alright, you make a pretty good Superman. He's like, oh, Superman's crap, like, oh, Superman's boring or whatever, and I'd play his Raiden. Uh, you know, that's not the first time, um, like, well, I'm gonna call this an hour verse show because it technically is. Mm-hmm. Like, th- that's not the first time they've used Injustice um, in Arrow, I think season six or something. Uh, Felicity was playing it with Oliver's son. The thing I don't understand about that is, um, first of all, how do they not know that Clark... I mean, I assume the story mode would probably be the same. So how do they not know that Clark Kent's Superman? And uh, also, <laughs> uh, how do they not know that Bruce Wayne's Batman? And also, don't they think that, like, I don't know, they seem like what their dad could do if he turned evil or something? I don't know, I, th- I thought that was a bit wonky, but I guess that's just like a thing you don't pay attention to when the when you get into stuff like that. Um, 
But can you say that about any character that's in the Arrowverse that's an Injustice? So like Flash, yeah. Black Canary, Firestorm, mm. anyone is like in just in Injustice, their identity would be revealed from. Exactly. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, maybe the story mode just doesn't right. exist in that reality or whatever. But um, yeah, I thought that was pretty interesting that they decided to use that, even though it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But uh, I can look past it because it was a cool reference. But um, aside from that, um, aside from like the Easter eggs, overall, I think the episode was really, really good. Like, obviously, we have the whole setup for the Clark and Lois story, which is the thing about the farm where uh, it was something to do with, like, a dodgy mor- like reverse mortgage or something like that. Where yeah, gonna, the loans and stuff. Yeah, where they're going to have, like, money, pretty much money issues they'll have throughout the show, which is, like, an interesting thing to set up, and that they'll be staying up the farm um, and that sort of thing. I think that's really interesting that they decided to move it away from Metropolis and stay in Smallville, which uh, is pretty cool, in my opinion. Um, I guess... Uh, what else was there? I'm trying to think. There was the uh, obviously the big twist at the end, uh, with Lex Luthor to, from uh, I assume it's changed because of Crisis because he wasn't black before. Well, yeah, yeah. No, but then it doesn't make sense because at the moment Supergirl's still going, right? I was about and to then... say this because I have a question about that, which is what in Crisis they uh they said that he's in charge of some like. What was it? Supergirl's like big the company that she works for, or whatever. I don't remember what it yeah, was. Yeah, it's called, I don't know what it stands for, but it's called the DEO, mm. and Luthor's apparently in charge of that. Mm. In fact, it apparently sounds somewhat good. Mm. But if, if if apparently um what you call it, Superman and Supergirl are on Earth Prime now, mm. so that technically means there's two. Well, we're going to assume it's Lex Luthor. There's two Lex Luthors on Earth Prime somehow. It's really weird, yeah. I didn't really understand what it was. Well, that doesn't make sense because yeah. you, doppelgangers can't exist anymore on the same Earth. Because if you think about with Flash, um, what's his name? What's the Wells? Oh, what's what's Wells called? Nash. Wells. Oh, Nash Wells. Yeah. What about him? Yeah, all the Wellses are in Nash now. Yeah, I mean, I get, I don't know. I mean, the, the Flash has contradicted itself so many times that its rules that they go back on it to. Like create some sort of drama in the show, so I mean, I, I wouldn't. It wouldn't shock me if they went back on it, but um, I think that I, I don't know. They need. They're gonna explain it like later on. Yeah, obviously. part of me feels like this doesn't have anything to do with the Arrowverse, but then obviously, like you were saying to me the other day, Jay, David Ramsey's gonna be in an episode. And I assume he's gonna play Diggle and he's gonna direct an episode. Yeah, he's meant to be in an episode, and he's directing an episode. Exactly. Yeah, I said so. this to you, so it makes sense because at the end of Arrow, him and Lila. Uh, took his kids and they even said well we're moving to Metropolis yeah. even in Flash as well which there was is... an episode that Diggle was in in like season 6 or something Yeah, and he goes oh we're just off to Metropolis just sort of stop by which is interesting because uh, now Superman doesn't live in Metropolis anymore he lives in Smallville again so um, I mean I guess it's close by there's nothing stopping Superman from going to um, Metropolis yeah he can fly he flew to like China or something in this episode didn't he when he was like fighting um when he was oh, fighting yeah. Lex, yeah, uh, which was pretty cool. Uh, Lex's suit was kind of weird. I thought he looked like the Doom Marine, or <laughs> Doom guy from. Doom. Yeah, he looked like. There's two names that I found. There's two names I found. It's called people. I just call it Captain Luther, mm-hmm. which is meant to be all an alternate, like Earth um, of Lex. Mm-hmm. Probably why it explains why it's black, not white anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, and the other name is for the suit. He's called the Stranger. That might be referenced, like, in a later episode. But... Yeah. I don't know, I'm just calling him Doom Guy for now. He looked exactly like the the, yeah. the guy from Doom. So, um, I don't know, I thought that was pretty weird, but uh, the visual effects, for the most part, were surprisingly good for a CW show, I would say. I mean, I, I they're still not, like, amazing. I don't think they were anything, like, out of this world, but for a CW show, they were really good. <laughs> so, um, I guess that's... I think the part when Lex Luthor and Superman fighting in space, mm. there were some parts there that looked a bit dodgy, but then, aside yeah. from that, I think they looked... It, it, it is the CW. Bit, the one bit I found a bit dodgy, right? Sorry, Saban. Um, yeah. You know, at the beginning, when it's in the nuclear power plant? Mm. Yeah. You know, he tried to... Well, he didn't try, he did. He froze that lake. Yeah. He was lifting mm. the ice. Mm. It's the ice that didn't look right to me. They I don't look, know if you guys know. like fake, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I guess that's what you, what happens when you have like a CW level budget. It doesn't exactly surprise me that they, the visual effects aren't exactly out of this world. But 
Uh, they'll do. I mean, uh, it provided it gets a good adaptation of Superman, which I think this is. And uh, I would say, I mean, I know people don't want to compare them, but I do like this a lot more so far in this one episode than I have liked Superman in the entire DCEU and any of, like, Snyder's movies. Because I feel like uh, this version of Superman is a lot closer to what I... Like, when I think of Superman, this is what I think of. It's not really the mopey, like, sort of depressed version of Superman in the movies. I prefer, like, the sort of happy-go-lucky Superman who has issues and is... I feel like this version of Superman's more relatable because they even had that line, which I really liked, where um, Lois says something to him, like, uh, where she says, like, your life's falling apart, that's what makes you human, or something like that. Uh, I don't remember the exact line what she said, but I thought that was really good because in the what part of my problem with the DCEU Superman, they make they made him out to be like this sort of messianic like big figure, even though he's the whole point of Superman is that he's an alien, but he has human problems, and that's what makes him relatable. Uh, which I didn't really get for the DCEU on. I always thought this one was uh, even before the CW. I mean, I, I know people had issues with how he was written in Supergirl and stuff, but uh, I thought that the version of the CW is bad. This show's proved it to me. I've always like liked this version of Superman and I think this was a big way to show it. Um, but yeah, I think aside from that, I'd, I'd love this. I mean, the st- uh, story of the episode was uh, pretty interesting uh, with the whole thing with Superman, like you said, trying to be a father and trying to do all that sort of stuff. Uh, the scenes with Superman were pretty cool. The stuff with Clark and Lois is interesting. I just thought that this is an overall great episode. I don't, I don't know if you guys have anything else to say about it. So Let's hope it's consistent. Yeah. Let's hope it's definitely consistent. Is there anything you guys would like you'd want to happen this season? Um, I mean, I don't. Part of me like doesn't want them to sort of crab in too much, so I don't want like Brainiac and every like Superman. Yeah, thing ever that's to... gonna be way too much. Yeah, because you know, like how it Flash, where they just shoved in Godspeed in like the past two seasons, and he just had no place to be there, but he was just there. They're because... not gonna do that straight yeah. away, though. They're gonna do that in later seasons, where I, I'm worried that they might start cramming things in. We could see bloody Doomsday one episode, Brainiac the next, or something. Uh, Dark Side did the episode after, and then like, yeah. Metallo after, or something like that. Yeah, because I feel like this isn't the sort of show that because even this episode it didn't feel like sort of the villain of the week sort of thing it felt like it's going to be like some sort of ongoing story i hope yeah uh, then i think they're definitely going to build it up mm-hmm. but the one thing i don't like that doesn't make sense to me and you were saying this to me someone earlier is how did superman not, superman not die when he gets stabbed with a, a kryptonite knife in the heart yeah that, <laughs> that, that, that makes, makes no really sense confusing. to me uh, Jay, do you have an explanation for that? Does, does like Kryptonite work differently in the C- in the Arrowverse? That's why I keep trying to call it the CW universe, but does does Kryptonite work differently in the Arrowverse that it wouldn't have killed him? Um, no. If anything, right, it should have like made him feel weaker, like when he like exposed it, not like fully stabbed him, but like had it near him. That would have made him weak because that's what happened to Supergirl. Yeah, because that's what happens in um. Because I remember in. Uh, this isn't in the Arrowverse, but in Batman Superman movie, World's Finest, which is like the Batman the Animate Series, Superman the Animate Series crossover where they had that, which was better than BVS, by the way. If you're looking for a good Batman and Superman movie, go and watch that. Uh, I remember there's a scene where Batman takes out a bag of kryptonite and holds it like pretty far from Superman, and Superman like puts his hand up in front of his face and like gets like visibly distressed by it. So I'm pretty sure if and that was like a tidy amount, so I'm pretty sure that could do that to Superman. I'm pretty sure him getting stabbed by it would kill him. But um, I don't. I don't really know. That was a bit weird. Uh, also, speaking of kryptonite, one thing I noticed was um, in the scene where uh the boys kind of find the ship uh and they get the kryptonite out. Um, they had orange kryptonite, and in the comics, orange kryptonite gives animals superpowers. If that doesn't be if that means crypto the super dog is showing up, I'm gonna that make me very happy because that would like I I used to watch that stupid cartoon that used to come on Cartoon Neo. About... I remember that cartoon. And they had... Yeah, I remember that cartoon. Yeah, and they had Bathound, and he was like dressed as Batman, and it was so stupid. But I, I loved that show when I was younger. So, uh, if they... uh, Crypto's already been taken up as a character though. He's on Titans. No, let, no let's not. Pretend, let's just pretend Titans doesn't exist. <laughs> Actually, to be fair, it wouldn't exactly shock me if they said this was in the same universe as Titans because a crisis and b i've got a feeling that all the cw shows are going to get cancelled this one will survive and be moved to hbo max which i'm pretty sure is where titans is like living out its life now i think i said this to you yesterday Savon. every other show is either dying or is dead arrow's done 
Flash is dying. Supergirl's already been said it's going to end, so that's on its way out. Yeah. Black Lightning's on its way out. Legends is dying. Batwoman didn't even Shit. become alive. I'm not going to yeah, never survive. Terrible, yeah. yeah. And uh, this is the only thing left. Yeah, I mean, what else? Even I'm trying to think. There's literally nothing else. Yeah, there's Flash. Flash is alive for now. You even sent me a post on this on Insta saying once Flash dies or like ends. Yeah, the Arrowverse dies with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, okay. The Great Arrow, the Canaries got. What was that? What it was called? Great Arrow, the Canaries. That thing got cancelled before, before it even came out. Got cancelled before it even came out. Which, um, I mean, that's some sad times, I suppose. But uh, that's amazing. They actually set it up at the end of Arrow. Like they had like, left it on a cliffhanger. Right. Also, that Green Lantern show is going to be on HBO Max, and I assume Diggle's going to be in that. So I've got a feeling this thing's going to get moved to HBO Max at some point. Maybe that'll give it a bigger budget, and uh, it'll have like a bigger chance to grow there. But um, I think that's about it, really, for this show, for this yeah. episode. I I really enjoyed it. Uh, I think it's a much better adaptation of Superman than any of the movies have given us in a long time. Um, and I hope it stays this good. Because uh, if it does, we'll have another good superhero show on our heads. And with stuff like WandaVision right now, that'd be like another good thing to kind of add to the arsenal of good superhero shows. But um, Yeah, definitely. Uh, do you have anything else to say, Jay? No, pretty much covered everything, to be honest. Yep. So, um, yeah, that's our thoughts on Superman and Lois. Uh, be sure to let us know your thoughts um, in the comments below. Uh, be sure to like the video so it gets shared around YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button for more videos like this. Be sure to check out our Instagram, link in the description. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time. See ya.